Good morning. Welcome, everyone, to the live webinar here at Admiral Markets. My name is Chris, and today we're going to focus on the live trading room, of course, with Forex commodities and stock indices in our vision. First, be aware of this disclaimer, though. It explains that the video, that this webinar, first of all, of course, and later on video, is shown to a global audience that may not be suitable for everyone. Please visit AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact the appropriate entity, appropriate entity sorry, for more info on that. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange in global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar and later on recording is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this video, you agree with this disclaimer and also live webinar, of course, and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. So today's focus, we're going to be looking at FIBS. FIBS are most useful when the trend is is taking place, when it's ranging, when the market is going sideways, FIBs are not so useful because then prices is just basically uh, respecting tops and bottoms. And those FIB levels in between really tend to be skipped or do not have that same uh, value, do not have that same uh, uh, reaction. Basically, price does not, not that does not react the same as strongly as often as when there's a strong momentum and trend going up. So that's the second step, though. If, if there is a trend, of course, Fibonacci levels are great. Patterns are always very useful, of course. So that's the first two steps, looking what is the trend, are there any patterns, and uh, thirdly, are there any filters, like support or resistance, that might make a trade interesting or perhaps not. Step four would be if the first three steps are okay, there's a green light for those, that is the analysis part basically done, uh, I dive into planning a trade and uh, seeing what is the roadmap, what is the path of least resistance for price, at what point do I think there's a wide open space that's interesting to, to trade, and uh, that basically, then I say, okay, this is the decision zone where I want to see price move to, and once it's there, for instance, at this 55th, what type of trigger am I looking for uh, when price gets there? which is, of course, the, the method of, of entry, basically. Well, it does not have to be that trigger is the signal, and then the entry could be uh, slightly different. But, for instance, the trigger could be engulfing twins at the 50, but the entry could be the break of the candle high. All right. With that said, uh, this morning, if you looked at my wave analysis, perhaps... I was already commenting that the dollar yen is breaking the major resistance of a daily trend channel. That is could be a huge break. It is happening right now. It's something we talked about. I have a feeling oodles of time <laughs> times because it was really something that was always on our list. Of course, dollar yen is a major, so we looked at it consistently and was looking for a break to the upside. Uh, and it seems to be. Finally happening. I say it still cautiously uh, in a way because it took so long. Uh, yesterday in the weekly Forex uh, outlook that you can find in technical analysis, I was saying that I think the break should happen soon because if it doesn't happen uh, this week or next week, you know, then uh, it's it's just becomes less plausible that we'll get a bullish break. So... Looks like the yen was listening, kind of half at least, and it is pushing. Let's take a look at that in a second. First of all, though, we will take a quick look at the calendar. Ned has already <clears throat> actually wrote about that yesterday in uh, Fundamental Analysis. Just go to Analytics yet again, click on Fundamental instead of Wave or Technical. And uh, Ned wrote about all the upcoming events there. So that could be uh, the best to look at uh, that spot. A lot of things happening this week. His list was quite large. Uh, I think if I remember correctly, there is an NFP, but let me double check that for you. Yes, there is Friday, of course, always Friday. NFP indeed. Other than that, Wednesday, crude oil, ADB, some trade balances, Construction PMI and the pound this morning. So we had an Aussie interest rate. That stayed the same. 
Well, yeah, you can see all the, the list here. Make sure to check this calendar or any other calendar, of course, before trading to know about the potential events that could rock your uh, your your entries, your setups, your trade management, etc. All right, with that said, let's take a look at the Kiwi. All right, the Kiwi is making a bigger consolidation. Yes, Nanit and I were bearish, but the uh, price was, was certainly respecting the resistance. But as it basically approached the support levels, it was not able to, to break below it. So when that happens, well, what can you do? This is turning out to be a massive consolidation. And we have to step back. This is the outer chart. And take a look at the bigger picture to get more understanding. What is going on here? This is actually... Uh, something that I did talk about that I was a bit, um, let's say, not too pleased with the overall kind of structure that seemed kind of, um, in a way, risky, how it was developing. Yes, downside could occur, but I did remark that I think that the, the, the pattern was kind of, uh, <clears throat> let me say this way, a bit choppy and looked like a bigger correction, bigger upside correction. Uh, could could be the risk involved when uh, when trading the Kiwi. There seems to be indeed a, a huge consolidation zone here. So if we zoom out to the four-hour chart, you can see that overall here, it is it's besides this actually this peak to the upside, price has really gone sideways for uh, two months now, right? As you can see, stayed in this zone already for uh, for quite a while. We can take off this one between these pink lines without. With this an exception. So yes, it could be it had the shoulders indeed with the, the shoulders here and here and the head obviously at the top. That's one way of looking at it. But also we have to realize that this is a huge sideways zone. Price, for that really to break, price needs to break below this, the bottom of the sideways zone. So the bottom, where, where would that be? It would be anywhere around these levels, I would say, between these two pink bands. It's got to break below that, got to break below 72 before really uh, any substantial probably uh, of a down move uh, could be expected. So Kiwi does not look interesting anymore to me. Uh, from a daily perspective, you can see it was pretty nice, uh, well, not beautiful, but there was some upside here, as you can see, with a lot of choppiness, though. We could put maybe this channel on, but... Uh, there's kind of a little bit of an underthrow here. That can happen sometimes. Otherwise, the channel does look pretty neat, in my view. So still at the bottom of the channel, that's also another reason why price would need to break below these pink lines. Because then it, if it breaks those pink lines, it's breaking the channel, and we could expect some downside correction. I would say at least to test these bottoms and these tops somewhere around here. So that's not a ton of space before we bump into some substantial support already. Another support zone down in here. So if we break uh, basically 72, there's some space down to 70. So for that trade to happen, I, I would keep an eye on uh, this, uh, let's see, this uh, daily chart. The, there we go. Yes. Uh, and looking for a daily candle that goes like this, closes with the low, breaks that those levels, then look for retracement on lower time frames for a move down. It's not a great space, though. All right, from a weekly perspective, this upside, still a correction perhaps, but time will tell if that's true. Ultimately, we can still put a fib from here to here, though, and you can see that price just dashed to hit the 50 fib. So, yes, that's possible. It is possible still that this, like the euro, it's bearish. We had downside. This could be a correction. 50 fib hit, break the channel, and down it goes. So that's something we got to keep an eye on. That's why, you know, from that perspective, uh, this channel, this pink lines are important. Now, considering the fact that U.S. elections are going to take place one month, four days from now on November the 8th, Tuesday, can the dollar make a huge move before that election? Probably not. So it might break, don't get me wrong, it might break here, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it bounce and it stay in this channel, but the zone, the, 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 the zone might be moved downwards and it might stay in this zone instead of this zone, right? So now the price is in this zone, in the blue zone. What could happen is that the zone gets moved down prior to the elections into the green uh, circle. Could easily happen. We've got five weeks of trading left in front of us, and some movement is going to happen. 
But I don't think there's going to be a ton of movement on the dollar. Just from a rational point of view, I know the markets are not rational, but uh, you know they're driven by emotions. But generally speaking, though, I think that if the election, such a big event as the U.S. elections, particularly this one, I would say probably all elections, but particularly this one, where the differences between two candidates uh, are are I would say larger than usual. Um, I think that traders, the market, generally speaking, just would not have enough participation, not enough um, movement to really sustain a large trend here with such a big kind of unknown uh, factor uh, lingering soon in front of it, right? There's a there's basically uncertainty because of this political event. It's not even a risk because we cannot quantify it. So it's more uncertainty. Uh, risk, we can say it's risky if we know, you know what type of, how much risk can be involved in it. So politics is not something that usually disturbs our trading. We did have it with the Brexit, of course, recently. Yeah, sometimes it occurs. It's not something regular, though. These these events are not every day. We have, uh, we have of course, uh, news data that comes out every day, but not political stuff. So I think that the investors, and I think the market will wait for that event to, ha to occur. There will be a reaction depending who gets chosen, some reaction probably in some way. Uh, and But then I think that, generally speaking, uh, the markets will then wait for the Fed again, right? And that could be the catalyst, the trigger that could create when the Fed, if the Fed does choose to make a, a rate hike another time, that could be the catalyst for dollar strength that I'm still expecting. So that could send this Kiwi below 70 and we might see a challenge, a move lower to challenge this bottom. And then today I'm going to have webinars on Tuesday uh, the 6th and, uh, sorry, the 8th and uh, Tuesday 15th to discuss uh, these things regarding the dollar and what we can expect with this news event, I mean this political event. Regarding the, the euro dollar, uh, I was seeing this still as a potential for uh, a bounce, but price is really, really speeding up. That does not seem as likely at the moment. So... I was looking for an ABC zigzag up to 112.75. I was thinking that price will probably make something like this. But now that price broke basically below uh, the 61.85, right? Any of these fibs seem likely candidates. But none of them really stopped price on this four hour chart. And price is just continuously showing bearish candles. So, yeah, from that point of view, um, I don't think that at this moment a bounce is, is, is a good trade. I think that this candle, specifically, especially if this candle closes bearish like this, then I think that, in fact, uh, there's a good chance that price will build another bearish candle after that. Will I want to short it? Maybe not right in front of this support level, personally. So I think that your dollar is quite choppy anyhow, so I, I do not mind skipping this pair. I am not that, uh, was not interested in trading it, except if it moves up here for a short. Uh, or if it breaks this, this support level with the daily candle probably below it. Look for retracement and continuation. Those are the ideas I had, but uh, that's not going to happen this hour. Maybe not even today. Obviously, I don't see it move up here. I would need the daily candle below here. So, no, probably not today. I, I don't think that this uh, this is highly interesting considering the very, very small range within the bigger range. At this moment, it's fine for me to skip it. But uh, today, but not necessarily the rest of this week. Uh, I would not be surprised if at the 88.6 fib, by the way, right? This, let's say this four-hour candle closes like this. We get a bit of retracement. Price moves down to the 88.6 fib, gets a bit of a bounce there. We see a bear flag. If it makes a bear flag, 
like this, not even on the four hour chart, but more like hourly probably. Like this. It could even be still interesting to short uh, later today. Doesn't have, you have to be that big of a bear flag, but a small consolidation zone like this. Then today's candle will close bearish. Tomorrow we might see another smaller retracement and probably continuation. If, however, price does this, retracement, move lower, and it bounces strongly and then starts to make a bull flag, uh, actually, in that case, it could still be an 88.65 fib bounce. Price might still make it up to 112.20, 112.50, 112.70. Seems very unlikely at the moment, but you never know. Markets, especially your dollar, like, you know, in this current state with such a large, huge range and a triangle within that range and another triangle within that triangle, well, yeah, that uh, that can take uh, you know a lot of um, uh, ups and downs before it breaks. All right, so not so interesting. What is interesting for me is the dollar yen, though. Dollar yen is specifically looking at a breakout, and this is, from my perspective, huge. We talked about this many times already, and if you're in that trade, great stuff. Congratulations, uh, you should be doing fine, uh, and yeah, there were there were some good opportunities already. Now, if you're not, that's okay. We're going to talk about how to trade it in a second, or how I'm how I'm trading it at least, I should say. Uh, but uh, yeah, there were some good uh, upside potential already at the break here, at the bounce here, at the bounce here. Uh, those were probably the best ones, in fact, and the potential break right here again. So those could have been all setups potentially for upside. If you did, great job. We did talk about it, uh, I think, about a dozen times, this, this, this particular uh, pair, uh, in the past already as well, before it started to bounce here. So anyone joining this webinar was, should have been well uh, informed about how I was thinking about this, at least. Uh, regarding the current state, so looking smooth, we got a break already here, as you can see. Good breakout right there. So what I'm looking for now is a pattern. We got the break of the, the triangle, basically. That is a pattern break. What I like to trade is the pattern after the pattern. So let's zoom in. This could be a pattern, but it's a bit small. This is a small ABC zigzag here. So if you were trading an hour or two ago, uh, this bounce here, this small little pin bar, or this bullish candle, could have been a way to uh, to trade uh, this uh, pullback, right? 38.25. That could have been one way. If you missed that one, then uh, let's take a look at just a slightly higher time frame, one hour chart. Well, it might not. I think that was it. That was the the retracement right there. But it could still, don't get me wrong, build another uh, correction soon. What could happen is that price is going to make a higher high. Later this day, however far it wants to push, it is eventually probably going to make a, a bull flag pattern like this. That is the one that would be probably the better trade uh, in the future. At this moment, they're, you know, the, the, the trades are behind us, right? There was a breakout trade. I already talked about those. There were about five trades that were potentially possible here on, on the dollar yen. Um, if, you know, if you take one here, you might want to skip the breakout, but maybe you took this one, right? The great thing about scaling in when you have one trade that's up a lot of profit is you can move the stop loss below this this bottom, let's say here, below 102, and you have one trade that's up in profit, one that's a small risk or some risk, but it compensates each other. All right, if you're not in any of those trades, that's okay. I personally would be looking for a scale in if it shows upside a higher high and I see a bull flag and then I see price either bouncing at support or breaking the bull flag. That's my next view. That's my next setup on the dollar yen. Once this thing, this pair, I should say, especially a yen pair, but typically all, 
all pairs, right? Once they show momentum like this, continuation patterns should emerge on lower time frames, should see a couple of pushes here. Uh, eventually, we're going to see a bigger retracement, of course. Eventually, we'll have, you know, maybe two bull flags on the 15-minute chart or three, but then we'll have on the hourly chart, we'll get a bigger correction. We'll get a bull flag on the hourly chart, right? That will take more time to correct, but then we'll get a break there. Eventually, we'll have divergence on the hourly chart, so we'll get a correction on the four-hour chart, and the correction on the four-hour chart might be bigger. So, you know, as price pushes, it's going to, of course, eventually run out of steam, and we'll see corrections on one thing from high until maybe this whole upside is, is you know, running out of steam on a daily chart, etc. Well, for the moment, I think there's plenty of space to the upside. If this is going to close with a daily candle above it, and that still, of course, depends on today. Yesterday, I was explaining that today I want to see, for trading the breakout, I actually, especially on the daily chart, got to see a daily candle uh, break above the resistance level. All right, that's that trend channel I'm talking about. All right. So let's zoom in now. This candle, if this candle breaks above this trend line, closes near the high as it does here, that's a great price action signal. I am a huge fan of, uh, as you probably know, for those that join regularly, of using candles like this, price action confirmation signals for my analysis. Uh, I like to keep my analysis. Um, basically making decision zones, but I want price to confirm my analysis. And the reason is, I'm not saying that trying to, you know, let's say preemptively take a trade as price reaches support or resistance. You know, there are traders that do that very well as well. That's great. If you're one of those, keep on doing that, no problem. Or if you think that you can, you know, that's perfect. I'm not one of those traders. I rather like to see the candlesticks confirm my analysis, my confirm what I think is the roadmap or path of least resistance for price. And yeah, I just like those, those you know, the, the candles confirming that. So a confirmation here would be, from my point of view, a daily candle like this. I think that, you know, the, the basically this is a breakout. One more trade idea besides the ones uh, mentioned on the, the bull flags on the 15 minute and one hour uh, the chart, sorry, would be to put a fib on this candle, especially, of course, only if the candle close is near the high. Well, within 20%, put a fib on this candle. Look for retracement, I would say 23.6 fib. Maybe it'll go to 38.2, maybe, but it could easily be a shallow one like 23.6. I think the stop loss should be below the candle low. And the target, well, the target could easily be 103.75, 104, uh, but even higher. It, you know, this is, if this really starts breaking uh, substantially with a lot of momentum, then we got to realize that uh, on a weekly chart, hang on, there we go. On a weekly chart, folks, this could be a huge trade because we had this upside. All right, this upside right here for a few years. <clears throat> for those of you trading uh, already five years by now, recognize this upside. This started way back 2011, continued to 2012. For those of you that just started, you might uh, not, uh, of course, recognize that. But that was a huge, huge, huge upside on the dollar yen. After a huge downtrend before that, by the way. Also a multi-year, multi-decade downside, by the way. Um, with its huge pauses before, by, by the way, as well. Of course, not the price is always moving or, or always traveling in one direction. There were a lot of pauses, a lot of consolidations. Uh, like here, for instance, and here. But all, all in all, it was a great uptrend. So we had a substantial correction last uh, two years, right? But uh, if we look at this, you see the price is at that 50 mark. Huge level. 
So that if it is getting a daily candle above this resistance, I'm sorry for those fibs that make price a bit difficult here, but <clears throat> if it does get up that above that 50, let me get rid of those fibs quickly. There we go. Then we know why, how this could be so substantial, right? A break here and price could, even if it doesn't break this high, but it could retest these bottoms, for instance. Let's put a fib from here to here, right? The 23.6 fib, for instance, is 105.20. That's a very shallow fib. If it starts to retrace this leg, it only goes to the 50 fib of that leg. It's at 112.20-ish. That's about a 1,000 pips right there. And that's only if it goes halfway this bearish retracement. So yeah, of course that doesn't have to go up in one shot. It could uh, make a move up to 23.6 fib, make a bit of retracement there, then go up to the 38, make retracement there, then hit the 50 finally, right? So always these ups and downs, but you get the point. So that's, I think, very interesting and uh, could, be, uh, could be a great to keep an eye on this one. I think this could be, yeah, it has potential. All right. <clears throat> The pound, uh, well, broke already, unfortunately, basically uh, the bounce that I was expecting, I mean, I was at first 50, at first I thought this would be the downtrend continuation. Then I started to shift towards a bounce because it's, I, I thought that there was a higher chance of a triangle like that. But I did say, if we get a close below this low, that triangle is invalidated. Well, we had that, we had downside. Now was that a bounce? Was that a basically a triangle like this? Or will it break and continue with the downtrend? That was the question. So we had a couple of bullish candles here. It looked like it was bouncing, but we needed really for that to happen, for us to think that there could be a bigger rally upside, we needed to break above resistance still, right? It never really did that. We had some candles here, but it never made a, a second move up. Instead, yesterday it uh, gapped down and continued lower and closed. Not only did it break 128.50 eventually after it bounced, it then also invalidated this, this bottom, right? Therefore, it's not a triangle. It closed relatively near the low. And indeed, if you put a candle like I just showed on the dollar yen on this pound dollar chart, then we had a retracement to the 38.2 fib, 23, just missed the 38, maybe by two pips or so. And now it's heading lower again. If you looked at my wave analysis, you could have seen, you saw that I was considering this to be a corrective zone. And I said a break below this bottom and we'll see a, a breakout. So anyone measure, you know, keeping an eye on this, maybe took one of you know set up somewhere in here perhaps on the break or this break if you were looking at it that's great if you did great job you're in uh, in those pips if if not then let's take a look quickly <clears throat> uh, at the targets that I mentioned here There we go, 127.75, I think we're past that already, 127. All right, so here, just like the dollar yen, I think I'm looking for a bear flag. Looking for a pattern, some, some kind of correction here like this. In those cases, I like to add an awesome oscillator and look for a move back to uh, the zero line. So you can see very much powerful here, good momentum. That momentum is not going to last forever. Okay, that is going to die out. It is going to make a correction. The, you know, the question is, what type of correction? Is it going to be a bear flag like this? And then we'll see this oscillator kind of turn and start to head back to that zero line, right? If that's the case, the bear flag will break. 
and we'll see a new leg lower. Then I think the target could be 127. Let's add the pivot points quickly. I think that could be useful in this case to see what kind of targets to look for as well, besides the FIB levels. And you see the price is broken below the S1, S2, just below 127.50, S3, 126.60. Okay, this could be useful to have on the chart. Um, so yeah, some kind of retracement. Now, if price, however, starts to make an upside like this, all right, I'm a bit more cautious. It could still be bearish, but uh, you know, with that momentum in in play, uh, I would. Yeah, I would be a bit more cautious. I think that definitely wouldn't short it immediately. I would like to see some time fact here, a couple of five to six candles not breaking this high at the very minimum before shorting it. And yeah, yeah. Alrighty, so otherwise, let me think for a second. Yeah, so the break yesterday, basically, nothing to add there. Yesterday, bear flag, break, and then the break of the... 128.50, the close below it, and today the continuation. So I think today we might see a pullback and just follow through yet again. I wouldn't be surprised, but uh, let's see how it reacts and when it retraces. It might not retrace right now. It could still push lower before we get some retracement. But I'm not a fan of trading it here. It's either, either you know, this morning at the break, here, here, or somehow maybe the turn up here if you're very lucky obviously that that would be a great pick but um yesterday of course it was also different this break perhaps this pullback those could have been opportunities now i'm not a big fan of trading it now i would rather wait for a bear flag all right now these these downside opportunities by the way were not ones that i took uh because i was looking at the bounce so what I would be looking for rather would would have been for price to stop at this level, make an impulse, and look for upside. That never happened. So I didn't trade the, the pound, by the way, myself. Um, so just to be aware. But because of the higher time frames. So I was not a big fan. I did see the break in the video. I just said I'm not taking this. But it was good. So sometimes you can see the skip trades that work out. That's fine. All right. Uh, but this morning was a different story because, from my perspective, at least because the candle close was below the previous bottom and we had a good candle close near the low so any trades in here was was perfectly fine from my point of view or it had less less risk uh involved because of the the break all right All right, your dollar is already at that 88.6 fib. Let's see how it bounces here as well if we get a bear flag like that. Potential downside. If we get a bounce, then it depends how it reacts. You know, I'm, I'm not sure. This is a big triangle, so it might be better to skip the your dollar in general if that happens. But if it does get up to, once again, to 112.70, that's interesting. All right, pound yen. Getting out of that oversold area. Well, there are a couple of things. Uh, you can see that it is kind of ranging here after this downside. A potential head and shoulders still, inverted head and shoulders still uh, available for us. There's a triple bottom potential here, or actually there was already a bounce here, so there's a triple bottom. But different than the pound, it's not breaking as yet, and that has to do with the fact that the dollar yen obviously is moving up. So from this perspective, pound yen might be better to skip. Euro yen is moving higher. We talked about that too, that fact that there could be an ABC, and it's finally reached the minus 61.8 target.
let's see, all in all though, this is a huge correction already. ABC, ABC, and uh, might be another ABC, or a five wave, let's see. If it's a triangle, it will be a ABC. If it's a, if it's a correction, normal correction, it could be an ABC, uh, one, two, three, four, five. In any case, at this moment, it does look bullish because of the bounce and, you know, the, the price actually before that was bearish. Don't get me wrong. But at this moment, this is a huge correction already. Hit a huge target as well. Ultimately, though, I think the dollar yen is looking uh, a, a bit better. Probably for me to trade a euro yen, I would like to see today's candle, I think, at least close bullish with the close near the high. We're right at this trend line, too. If the close, if there's a strong daily candle today with the close near the high, yeah, it could be ready for a breakout. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of it at this moment. It is uh, just like the Kiwi kind of ranging and stopped at 38.2 Fib, but now stopping at the resistance. All in all, quite choppy. If anything, maybe shorting it because of the resistance here for a down move to the 50 Fib. You see there's some weakness here. This could be an inch, head and shoulders right at that resistance. Uh, at the top of the triangle, there's plenty of space to the bottom of the triangle, or at least down to the 50 fib. Probably, I think the best way, yeah, I think this four hour is still the best, this four hour candle. If it closes like this, could be a good breakout candle, I would say. And the retracement for continuation lower uh, is, a, is a decent chance. All right, dollar cad, not that interesting at this moment. It is basically uh, gone back to the support level of these bottoms right in here bounce off of that twice making a new upside but uh, we can see what kind of consolidation was here I don't want to trade right into that so that does not seem interesting to me euro pound is uh, didn't make the zigzag that I was hoping for I was thinking that it could make a zigzag down here to the target and then we could start a new trend it didn't do that it did respect these fibs but didn't break this bottom and eventually uh, basically broke the triangle to the upside. The support level was unbreakable, so that zigzag didn't occur. All right, this this trend line broke, and uh, the 61.8 was respected, but price went above it. Now it's building a higher high, so it looks like your pound back into uptrend, not a double top like you know the potential we were talking about last week. Let me get rid of this fib. All right, there we go. So not that double top probably. And uh, a bit of a pause though, but breaking that, that's why the trend line was important because if it breaks that trend line, this pause is turning into a retracement, not a, not a reversal. Now I don't trade the Euro pound personally. I'm not a big fan of it to trade it. I, you know, I just think that the pair is not really uh, aligned with what I like to see, so I rather skip it. So I'm not a big fan of trading it. I guess that uh, if you like trading it, that perhaps this consolidation zone right above resistance could be interesting in some ways. Uh, maybe this breakout candle right here, for instance. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not trading it, as I said, but uh, it does look like a, a bear flag. It does look like a break bear flag. So from that perspective, might not be that bad. I'm, I'm not a big fan. 
Uh, you're odd. Let's see what else is going on here. We see I've got a that keen on it, but yes, yeah, it's just too many bottoms here. So many bottoms right here. All right, this starts maybe to look like a descending wedge. Right, if it is a descending wedge, well, it isn't if it is, but if it, uh, sorry, it is a descending wedge, but if it breaks, I should say, then uh, obviously there could be some space here between the bottom and the targets, specifically the second target with this bottom, of course. If it breaks resistance, then uh, price could get up to the 61.8 fib. And other than that, I don't see anything that is interesting from my perspective. Uh, let's see, four hour, one hour chart here. I mean, if you're, if you're looking for classical zigzags, this is a good one, right? Right here. It's also something that <clears throat> uh, that uh, Joseph explained in his strategy on the hourly and 30 minute chart. You got a, uh, well, I'm not sure if this is trending really, probably not trending enough, but in any case, you got a good zigzag, you got a good momentum, so if it's a zigzag or if it's a trend continuation, right, there's always a good chance of a follow through. So 50 fib, look at that, right, good turn there and uh, move down. Now, this particular part is choppier than this part, which leads me to believe that, uh, you know, some upside potential correction is, is possible whether here or to minus 61.8. All right, so within that mess, there's a small, smaller mess right here, kind of like a falling wedge. So I still think that a, a bounce somewhere in here back to resistance like that is possible. I'm, just because of the, how the price is moving. It is very consolidation and corrective. It does not really set up sweetly with uh, with a good setup, I think. Pound odd is really breaking lower a lot, though. That was uh, something we talked about last week, too, that price has to go back, in my opinion, finally back to the long-term moving average. Okay, so that was uh, definitely a week ago I was talking about that. That was the October, no, September, sorry, 28th, 27th. So roughly around here, I was saying, look, this has moved down a lot. It There's quadruple, triple divergence. Uh, I'm not trading it. I at least need to see price go back to the long-term moving average at least once before we can see a new start. So that's what happened finally later that week. Hit it, big wick set that, and turned. Now it closed that week here, opened with a gap, and broke the consolidation and continued lower. So anyone trading it prior to the weekend, I know it's tough, uh, then that would have worked out okay in this case. Now, trading it over the weekend is always uh, risky, of course, uh, something that you might not like. Uh, so, you know, in that case, you would have had to trade it almost a few hours after the open. So that's one of the disadvantages of catching a move like this, is that although the analysis was saying, uh, my analysis was saying at least, take the uh, the bounce here at at the long-term moving averages, that worked out fine. But just because of timing stuff, like end of Friday, uh, beginning of Monday, uh, and things like that, uh, I missed my own trade setup, ironically. And probably many of you don't have this trade either. Now, pound out is not an easy pair, I think, to trade anyhow. Uh, but yeah, that's how sometimes things go. And that's, that's, that's just part of life, and we can't do anything about that. Um, but yeah, the analysis did work out. Just practical point of view, didn't catch this trade. What can you do? But this is bottom. This sorry, this pair is breaking the bottom. I'm getting my words mixed up the entire morning. I have the wrong sequence somehow. I don't know why. Uh, all right, so this bottom is getting uh, broken as we speak. What it does need though is a break still. With the daily close, that's about to happen. Later today, we'll know for sure. 
Now, what to do in this case? I'm not sure. This uh, this could, I mean, the pound out could move a lot. Don't get me wrong here. And uh, this downside was pretty momentum. Pretty good momentum here. So if the day closes like this, yeah, it might. What I think would I would do tomorrow is well probably just wait for price to get back to the 21 EMA. Yeah. Because I think that considering this momentum, I think that price, if it closes with a good close today, near the low, tomorrow I think we'll just see a shallow retracement. Back to the 21 EMA. Might poke just a bit above it, don't get me wrong. Right? It's not the exact science. But eventually I think that I will move back under. I will look for candlestick patterns in the 21 or above the 21 and or look for break of fractals here or kind of candles that that poke below that 21 EMA band and look for continuation breakouts. Probably New Zealand is probably doing the same. We can check out the other Zealand, right, to see which of those two uh, could be better, pound out or pound New Zealand. Uh, a lot could be said about that by looking at the odd news. You know, let's take a look how those two are uh, relating to each other. Uh, some of these exotics uh, I did not check out this morning. I was only looking at uh, the majors, but we can do that still. We've got some time left. And uh, Darshan is saying, okay, Dogon and Darshan have comments. Let's see, Dogon is asking about my TP for your dollar. If we break 111.71, let's take a look at that right now. And... Thank you so much, Darshan. Great to hear that. I'm happy to uh, to hear that it's that it uh, provides some some benefits and help at times. So once let's see, what is it? 111.71. 111.71. If it breaks that, well, I. What I would be looking for is a push like this. But the thing is that if it pushes right now, what I didn't, what I would like to see now is a bear flag actually, and then a break. And if that happens, my target, my first target is 111. Twenty-five. The second target is 11050. Next target is 110. Not a lot of space. If it breaks without the bear flag, I'm not trading it. I don't like this particular structure. Then in that case, it's yes. There's a lot of momentum. A lot of momentum, so it could break. It's just for me to trade it right here. Let's say as it breaks with this much movement already behind it, and various support levels relatively close by. Not interesting for me. Might who knows? It might fall to 109. That's fine. I I just rather not take that. Considering also the big correction uh, that's been taking uh, place so long. Nah. Not for me. Already on New Zealand. Oh, let me reboot quickly my administrator. One second. Yeah, the odd New Zealand. So as you can see, um, oh, you cannot see that much, but one second, I'll be rebooting fast. It looked like uh, a big consolidation zone, to be honest. Uh, looks like I, I think I lost my, uh, the lines I drew in the last uh, hour or 45 minutes or so. That's a pity, but okay, doesn't matter. Yeah, so now you see the odd Zealand, hopefully, and while it is ranging, it is a potential head and shoulders, 
there is momentum prior to, to the upside after a, a bounce at uh, just just below 102 no no I didn't reach 102 sorry I was misreading it I was looking for a bounce at 102 actually but it missed it by 30 pips or so which is not much for a weekly chart consider the fact that this is what we're looking at 88.65 bounce at 102.06 right and you can see just that small fraction it missed it really so close uh, so yeah the bounce is there now what good momentum to the upside I think that this will continue higher, but not maybe immediately. We see five waves here pretty clearly, I think. This is typically going to respond with an ABC, and after which we can expect again bullish upside. So the best way to tackle that, I think, is by putting a FIB from here to here to look for the FIB target, or from here to here to look for a FIB retracement. The confluence between those FIBs will be the very best, obviously, if there is. Usually there is. Let's see if that happens now. Let me put the FIB correctly not much confidence oh there is sorry sorry there we go 5061.8 for instance and the s2 this is a weekly pivot point by the way or the s1 38.2 minus 272 10450 104 10450 so what i would expect this price to make this zigzag like this to those targets but if it doesn't and it starts building a triangle here for instance like this right that could happen too then the break of that triangle is interesting too for upside. So Aussie looks to me like it has potential for upside in the in the in the, in the near future, but um, but not necessarily this week or maybe next week, right? There, some some time has to elapse for this correction to, to finish probably either like this or if it's a zigzag. But then I think that could be an interesting um, upside potential there. We talked about the New Zealand somewhere in here, and we're saying already at that point, well, this could be a, a pretty substantial potential wave three. Remember, 10450, 105, and it did. It made this upside from that point, finished this this impulsive piece. Then you got that that bull, bull flag. I talked about potential bull flags many times in this webinar. So if you're looking, if you're wondering, like, yeah, but give me an example, then here you can see one in right here right this impulse was finished eventually that's what happens price pushes 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 makes smaller corrections like this on smaller time frames right right here but eventually it's going to make it a correction that is bigger on um, on a bigger on a bigger time frame right this where this is four hour chart by the way so these were corrections on hourly charts then probably within that we see there were probably even 50 minute corrections that we don't even see on this time frame right those were all happening within this zone. If you don't believe me, we can check it out right now quickly. Let's put lines here and here. We had all kinds of corrections there. Eventually, though, those corrections run out and get divergence. We see a bigger correction in the four-hour chart, and then we get one more push. So that's why you can see it completed five waves. That's why I still am bullish after an ABC correction. If we zoom into the hourly here, you would see that we had corrections here and here, where I was talking about it there, I think, if I remember correctly, and here. And within that zone, you see corrections. But on a 15-minute chart, you would see corrections within that again. Oh, see? This is more of a one-hour correction. Let's see. Here's a small 15-minute correction, maybe even here. Right? This is, this is something you would see in the hourly chart. But these little things you would probably not see in the hourly. Right? Here or yeah all right you get the point so what next let's take a quick look at indices as well and some commodities just to get an overall picture uh dax kind of funny movement because bounce abc zigzag bumped into resistance and made a new lower low bouncing off that so it's quite quite volatile. I mean, if you just look at the recent price movement, 
uh, it was down, up, down, up, down, up, right? So quite a roller coaster here on this four hour chart. But on the daily, the structure I think is more clear. Uh, we see correction. And we do see a bullish impulse prior to that. Price has probably respected the 38.2 fib. This dash uh, down actually bounced off that 38.2 fib. So from my perspective, this daily chart is looking bullish. Uh, we did have a break here of this trend line, right? Uh, we had a break of this triangle basically as well. We have a potential inverted head and shoulders. Not only that, the price is moving very correctively and slowly above that with impulse prior to it. So yeah, I think that decent momentum, the escalator. So let's see how today closes. I think that's one way maybe I'm not trading this. So uh, I don't, I didn't really have any plan as yet uh, because I'm not trading it anyhow, but uh, the DAX. But uh, although I did uh, start to venture in that a bit recently, I was practicing a bit with it, but on lower time frames, not on the, these high time frames. But uh, I think that this does not seem that interesting to me right here because it's so close to resistance. But if there's a daily candle, that closes near the high and is able maybe to push above, I would say these, preferably these tops like this. That is a pretty huge daily candle, I know. It could be a good breakout. Might be uh, best to look for a small retracement on the hourly perhaps. On the hourly chart, also not that tradable, I think. I think the next uh, step is the breakout. All right, from my point of view, oil is probably going to make a bigger correction. Talked about that, I think, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure at one point or another, but anyhow, uh, I think that uh, this uh, is leaning towards a correction like this, towards 59 and 67. And uh, you can see the price stopped at the 50 fib here and broke out of this trend line. Pretty strong weekly candle last week, poking above that resistance after that 50 bounce. Also potential inverted hand shoulders here. I think that this is looking like a breakout that could push price up to uh, the minus 272 target. All right. Gold is looking like a bull flag, but, 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 but. I... Yeah, that's possible there, Shannon, indeed. Um, the US dollar might uh, might make that uh, retracement first. But do want to add, though, is that oil up, I think, is not going to be a huge move. So maybe, you know, as I said, these targets in mind. Now, one target is a bit higher than the other, obviously. <laughs> one is at 58, which is about $10. Yeah, it's a substantial move, I'm not saying. But that is also, in my view, completing an ABC zigzag, potentially. So from that point, if it stops at this target, there could be a new kind of structure going to the downside. I'm not sure how this will move down, though. I think that it will stop at these fibs and make some downside. But how much and how it moves down will be very important to understand what the next leg could be. And why I say that, because I think that if it flies down first or moves down pretty fast like this and then corrects more downside and maybe even the lower low could be possible who knows uh, however if uh, if it moves slowly like this opposite could be true right so it's uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how this that, you know this behaves 
Uh, obviously, we've had a lot of downside here. So I'm still cautious for price turning at this resistance. At least, let's say, to retest some of these support levels one more time. Until that point, though, uh, I think, yeah, there is space to these targets. And Darshan is, is thus saying that for oil to go up, uh, he thinks the, the dollar will uh, crash. Well, I think there could, I think the dollar, I think there will be definitely some small, slow movements before the elections. I don't think, as I said, during elections, yeah, there could be a lot of volatility. Yeah, the the oil. I uh, sorry, the gold. I think that this could be misleading a bit. Looking at this, um, sometimes this is a bull flag, but other times it's a start of a new a new downtrend, uh, a new trend. Sorry. So, all in all. Um, I guess, yeah, here too, the elections will play, play a role, obviously. Uh, gold could be in demand if, if the market thinks that uncertainty is high, for instance, right? So we'll have to see. It could be both, really. I, I'm not, I just want to make you aware that I wouldn't look at it too simple. Like, yes, this is for sure bull flag, you know. Don't, I, I would be cautious with it. That's what I'm trying to say. Due to the fact that indeed uh, gold is quite tied to uncertainty risk and hence the upcoming political economical um, mixture that, that is facing us so Um, divergence is present as well. Something we want to reckon with between these tops, right? So we had already the correction here. Yes, we made a higher high. There was some push, but not as impulsive that it would, uh, yeah, that, that it would avoid divergence. So got to be aware of that. Alrighty, folks. Let's see. Anything else? Yeah, S and P five hundred. Very corrective. Triangle, basically. Obviously. And uh, yeah, that's happening above this this broken top. That last month candle does not say much. It's a wick. Both the bottom and top. Huge indecision, I think, with the elections coming up. And yeah, that that, if anything, is gonna be also a huge impact, obviously. And I think that we're just gonna stay in the range here in October probably. I, I would not expect the high and the low of last month to be broken. I would be definitely surprised if that happened. Do you guys agree, guys and girls? Oh wait, Dogan is saying bear flag potential on your dollar. Let's take a look. Any other currency pair or you know some some stock indice index? Sorry, or I don't know anything else you want to take a look at your dollar. All right, there we go. So 88.6 fib hit bounce is just happening indeed. Uh, it could be an entry, indeed, but uh, it is on the early side, and 
I will probably, I, I was thinking about a long, to be honest. I know this, this one is a tough one for me because I was bullish at the beginning of the morning because of the ABC zigzag. And I have to tell you, I have to admit that this bearish momentum is, is kind of like driven me out of, psychologically driven me out of trading it. So for me, it's difficult to switch back in a way to think about taking it because I just kind of said, okay, I'm, for me, the downside was a bit too momentum. And so I kind of like already moved on. So probably that's the main reason why. Um, but yeah, that can happen. Sometimes you do get a push that goes deeper and it could still be a bouncing spot. If you're doubting like me, if you're not, there is a trend line, there's 888.65. So there are some good reasons. If you are down on like me, maybe one hour pin bar like this could be better. Uh, you know, that would give a bit confirmation. Uh, what also would be nice, I like to use five candle rule, five to six candles not breaking this, this bottom. This has been a huge push, huge momentum. So typically we're going to see five to six candles not breaking this at the very least. This is candle number five right now. So if it makes a hook back like this, which would not surprise me by the way, right? Uh, then we might see a, uh, a rally like this, or we might see price building at least a bear flag like this, right? Either way, it could bounce here. It seems likely it will bounce here. And depends how it reacts here. If it bounces again, there could be a bear flag. If it breaks, there could be a bigger momentum. So one, two, five, let's see, one or two more candles, not breaking this by the top of the hour, right? If it doesn't break this low, I think there is a good chance it will make a correction like that at the least. So what would be a good level? In that case, I think roughly around 111.70, 111.66, here in this, this zone. It's risky, but could be worth it. Just a small stop loss below probably 111.50, right? Doesn't have to be that much, I think. It's a risky one. Small stop loss is always risky. But uh, it, uh, I, it has its, yeah, I think it has its reasons here. I think it makes, it does make sense. It's obviously the momentum is against us, but this momentum could be a correction. And uh, it could be that price makes this as well. So for, from that point of view, even if it's only once and three times, the R2R R here is enough. However, if it then builds, if it bounces, but then builds a bear flag, then at the very minimum, I want to move it to break even. The very minimum here. So, I think a conservative target could be around 111.80. No, that's too close. It's only about, sorry, that's only about 16 pips. Um, so that's maybe not a good target, but it could, I wouldn't be surprised to see at least some reaction here, a small little supply demand zone. So it could do like this. Like that. Well, yeah. Let's see. Scanning through all these different time frames, we see various perspectives. Consolidation on monthly, weekly, daily, four hour we see uh, momentum, but within consolidation, very choppy one. All right, any, anything else, any questions?
All right, this week, by the way, we have a lot of webinars. Well, we have it always, I guess, but we got one more extra, basically. Tonight, we got uh, a webinar called Understanding the Story Behind Wave Analysis, Looking at Complex Corrections. This is a webinar that was actually, uh, we, we were going to do, I think it was like five weeks ago, end of August. But uh, I was, uh, right before the webinar, like that Thursday, I woke up with, uh, with, a, with a small fever, so I canceled it, and I, I, I sorry, I, I uh, moved it forward to, to today. So check it out if you want. If you want to know, you, I mean, I'm not. He, my goal here is not to uh, like go into to, to great details of becoming a fanatic wave counter. Let me say, if, if you like, if, if you're one of those traders, great for you. I. I Encourage that. I think that um, that's good too. But if if not, that's just as good. I think that uh, wave analysis can be used really in two ways. One is really in depth, but other is very like practical. So I want to focus a bit more on the practical side, but still dive into how you could look at complex corrections, understand them, without going into great detail. So tomorrow we have strategy. Tomorrow evening we have price action trading school, money management rules, and uh, Thursday we take a look at uh, the brain and what we can do to keep that uh, sharp during trading. So that's the webinars for, for this week. All right, folks, I don't see any questions. Let's take a look. Last look here at the dollar. It's small doji two minutes ago on this candle. That's candle number five. So if this candle is bullish, I don't think this bottom will break. If it's bearish, I will wait for one more candle, the opening of the next hour. Let's see. If it doesn't retrace back to my zone and just keeps pushing, then there's nothing I can do about it. I, you know, I was anyhow already was kind of hesitate, hesitating about this, this upside. So what can I do? Uh, the momentum to the downside kind of, in that case, threw me off, but those things happen. Uh, if it does, yeah, it might be an interesting potential there. Well, we'll find out. Oh, Ozzy. Ozzy. Yeah, we talked about that, but we can repeat it. Uh, it's basically, in my view, in a triangle close to resistance. And I'm not a big fan of this, but if anything, Right, we got a 38.2 fib bounce. If anything, I wouldn't be surprised to see some failure up in here. It is close to resistance. And I wouldn't be surprised to see price move down to perhaps the 50 fib here, like in an ABC zigzag like this, or even maybe a little bit lower. So this four hour candle, if it closes near the low, it would be breaking kind of this correction here, this upside, and there could be that ABC zigzag. If it doesn't, I'm not interested. Anyhow, this downside trade is quite a uh, counter trend at this moment still due to this momentum. But it could be an ABC zigzag. So this four-hour candle. If it closes in the low, I think that that's a pretty decent chance. If it doesn't, then uh, the alternative is a break to the upside of this resistance trend line. It would need a daily candle above it, I think. Anything below a daily candle might turn into a wick like this. You see, these were probably also break breakouts during those trading days. Price was probably also trying to push above um, resistance. But at the end of the day, there were big wicks. Price didn't manage to hold on to the gains. There was uh, weakness as the candle closed. And we did see substantial uh, downside retracements. So in my view, it's the same here. If we get a candle close above it, fine, with the closing of the high. But if we don't, we get a wick. Could easily be the same scenario where price retests the bottom. That's the, the quick version there. All right, hourly doji. 
Doji. Well, it's not a pin bar. It's just indecision. I guess it's okayish. It's at the 88.6, but it's at a trend line. Uh, sixth candle is bearish, so I would still wait for this candle. I think that we're at least getting some stop at this point. We had a Doji bearish candle already, so it looks like I think there is a decent chance of of a start of a correction here. Let's see if it can make one slight downside to 111.68-ish. Uh, At least that's my view. If uh, you know, if you're looking at this and you think, okay, that Doji plus trend line and 88.6 fib is enough for me, well, I can see that. Uh, I understand that. And but I think that from my point of view, I would still go with the stop loss below this this bottom and not below the Doji myself. It is possible to go to below the, Boji, the, the Doji, but I think it's too risky. I would rather go below this bottom. I'm still waiting, but I can imagine that uh, for some, this could be enough. In, in my view, if I would be trading it I, right now and not waiting, I would go below here with the stop loss. It's a tricky situation. The whole euro dollar is kind of yucky. But All right, folks. Thanks so much for, for joining today. Hope to see you uh, in the upcoming webinars. Thanks for, for your chats. And uh, see y'all soon. Cheers.